Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. For anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. And in today's episode, we're going to be continuing on with our VGC 2021 content, playing a team that I used in the past weekend's Players' Cup 3 qualifiers. So as a lot of you know, the qualifiers for the regional heat, which is the next round next month, happened this past weekend. Uh, this is the team that I took in. We're going to feature that today. I uh, have a couple of games with it, show you how it kind of functions. There is a poker pace down below and there will be a rental code at the end of the episode i went 19 wins two losses with this team put me on about 1690 points throw it up on the screen so you can see that so hopefully that is enough to get me through to the next round i'm sure it is just about anywhere and uh, i'd love to hear any of you that did play over the past weekend how you got on what your experiences were like what teams you played and how you ended up and uh, i'll keep my fingers crossed that all of you that have played and had a good run do get through to the next stage because it is a very exciting tournament and obviously with the rules updating on the 1st of february in a couple of weeks time we're going to have a new rule set going into those regional heats potentially so it's very exciting but getting on to the current rule set this is today's team and uh, i'm looking forward to kind of featuring it for you so hopefully you enjoy it friends and uh, without further ado let's get into our first match of the day Okay, so first up, we have a team of Cinderace, Mama Swine, Nyligo, Galeria Moltres, Whimsicott, and Spectria. So how are we playing this combination of Pokemon? Some threatening things in here, of course. You've got the Nyligo, something that we need to be very mindful of, especially with that power herb that it generally carries and the... Um, the Meteor Beam that it kind of combines that with for the one turn boost and then huge attack off the back of that. But uh, we do have some, we do have Landorus that we can bring in and uh, really take advantage of that with the Scarf there, making sure that we outspeed it and we can pick up a knockout. The other thing to worry about a little bit there would be the, the Mama Swine. It does cause us a few issues. I think Landorus is generally a nice Pokemon. It gives us the ability to intimidate the Cinderace. We outspeed most things on the team. Uh, we have to be mindful of the Whimsicott, of course, because that can cause all sorts of issues i think generally if we lead lecky and landers it leaves us a little bit weak to okay what we're going to do is i'm going to lead moltres i'm going to bring tapu finney and porygon 2 in the back oh do i bring do i bring glastria of a finney the only reason i want to bring finney is i just feel like we're a little bit short on having answers for mama swine and if we can get the trick room up with type of finney it does well against the majority of stuff especially if we've got a calm mind or a belt and it, it deals with like the moltres as well whereas glastria would struggle maybe a little bit more against the mama swine especially because it's a pokemon that we can't we can't intimidate and if it's got max knuckle and a life orb then it, it does get a little bit tricky Especially against the other Pokemon that we've got. At least with Tapu Fini, we've got a nice, straight, easy method for us to be able to uh, get some super effective damage onto it early on. Okay, well, this isn't the worst at all. Uh, we've got Whimsicott, we've got Moltres coming out. Problem is here uh, is a nasty plot. Um, from the Moltres. I think, like, one option we've got here is we could pivot into the, the Wimmy with... Um, Pivot into the Wimmy with U-turn and just go for a max airstream. It gets rid of the Whimsicott pretty pretty quickly. The other issue is there if we do that. The issue is if they Tailwind, which they're likely to do, and they can then take down the Landorus if they are life orbed. And we kind of need the Landorus to help us deal with Nihiligo in the late game. Hmm, Okay. But I really want to get rid of the Wimmy because it gives us then a clear way to... I think maybe even air slashing into the Wimmy isn't a bad play. We could stay in and just rock slide and air slash. But I really want to preserve Landorus if we can. This gives us the best way like rather than keeping it on the field. Um, yeah, I think that's what we're probably going to see from my opponent. I think they're going to get rid of the Landorus. Because it's a the biggest threat right now to Nihiligo. If Nihiligo is sitting in the back, I think. Um... But we need, <laughs> to be honest, we need to get rid of the, the Whimsicott before we, we get P2 onto the field. So if we want to go down a Trick Room route, we need to remove that because Taunt is definitely an option. Okay, so we're not going to see, we're not going to see the Tailwind. We are going to see an Eject button though, which is actually perfect because it does, um, <laughs> perfect for us in one respect that, that our Moltres is not going to get uh 
hit with a, um, a Moonblast, but a little bit awkward in a way that, that Landorus has been kept on the field now, which is not ideal. Now we do see that we've got the faster of the two Moltreses, which is good, but if we see an Airstream here, obviously that changes quite quickly. And yeah, that's not ideal because, anyway, I mean, we do survive, but we really want to be getting uh, P2 onto the field as soon as possible. Um, okay, so Landorus in an awful position now. I think we've got to get Hmm. Problem is getting P2 onto the field now is it's going to take a boatload of damage and I don't think we can afford to take the damage. I really don't think we can afford to take the damage. So we'll go for the U-turn into that slot. We'll protect Moltres just from that Meteor Beam from the Nihiligo. And we'll see uh, the Meteor Beam. Hopefully it is into the Moltres. That's where we want it to be going, into that Protect. Just get the Special Attack Boost, which isn't going to help. There's not really much we could do about that. The Airstream there really helped my opponent. The better play from us would have been going Airstream ourselves. Okay, they do go into the Protect. We get another U-turn off. So we're preserving Landorus, which is ideal. Um, I'm going to say Max Darkness, I think, into the Landorus slot now. It would make more sense. So do we bring in Finny or do we bring in P2? Like P2 is obviously the better option. But then I think if we take a Max Darkness, we'll probably be in range of a Sludge Bomb or a Power Gem from the Nihiligo, which is not really what we want. So I think to take the Max Darkness, stall at these these turns, it's probably better to do. Although we may see another Airstream. I, I'm not really... No, it's the Darkness. Yeah, okay. Makes more sense. And Temple Finn gonna be able to sup that up a little bit. Right, well plus one Nihiligo. Where are you concentrating your efforts right now, Nihiligo? Because we potentially could go for a max darkness into the Moltres. Uh into the Nihiligo, not the Moltres. Like I've gotta be I've got to try and get the knockout onto the Nihiligo. I think a Max Darkness Life Orb will do that. And I'm hoping because the Tapu Fini right now to my opponent is the big threat for my opponent. So you double into that. Get rid of it. Although we have just protected with Moltres, which is the, the, the bad thing here. The other option is we go for Max Geyser into Nihiligo and we switch. We switch into Landorus. And hope that the Nihiligo goes for the Moltres. Because we just protected there. And they're thinking, okay, well, they're going to try and stall us out. They're going to protect the Finny this turn. We can take down the Moltres. And then that frees up a little bit of time for us later on in this game. If they attack now into the Tapu Finny, it's not so good. It's not so good. But, I mean, we've got to make some sort of play here. Because we're really on the back foot after that first turn. After not maxing ourselves, kind of keeping with the pace with that first max airstream. Uh, our lander is not in a position where it can deal with an eye like it was kind of built to do. Um, yeah, it's, it's made things way more difficult for us. So we're kind of banking on this play from my opponent. Sludge Bomb, nah. Okay, well, that's it. Okay, well, I mean, we get the... If we can... <laughs> I say if we can take down... The Nihiligo here, it's kind of worth it. But if we take the double up into it... Okay, well, that's that's not that's not the worst. It really isn't the worst. We need to... If we get rid of the Nihiligo, that's a big, big help for us. And, of course... We can get P2 onto the field quite safely this next turn. Try and get the Trick Room up. Max Guard, and then go from there. So get rid of the Nihiligo. The reason why I sacked uh, Landorus there, I've been talking about using it as a way to deal with the Nihiligo, but at this point, like the the, the Landorus becomes a bit a bit pointless um, because obviously if we can take down the Nihiligo, it's, its role's kind of fulfilled. So the the one thing that we can do is preserve our Moltres for later on in this game. But we really we are relying heavily on on P two getting this trick room up now. Okay. Well, Mamo coming in. That's not so bad at all right now. 
that really isn't okay we get the download boost in attack not so great and that's the Dynamax turns done for the Moltres. Now, a double up from Moltres and Mama Swine, probably enough to get the Tapu Finny. Um, so what we'll do is we'll Max Guard and we'll go for that Trick Room. Oh, got to worry about Fiery Wrath, uh, Air Slash, Flinching, and Icicle Crash. So there is the potential if they double up into P2 right now, which is likely. Um, I don't think I want to make the risk though of not Max Guarding here. I think... If I, if I let Tapu Fini go down, things get way harder to deal with that Mama Swine. Whereas if we can get the Trick Room up, obviously it becomes a way easier uh, match after this. So there's the Air Slash, there's the Earthquake. Got your Trick Room and we're in a great place going into this next turn. So that's that's the magic of P2. So um, Mama Swine, is it? It's not Life Orbed. Um, but I mean, we're in a good spot now to get rid of the Moltres, which is the big thing. I think, hmm, so we've got our own Moltres in the back, but Moltres probably had speeds for Mama Swine. Is a Mama Swine going to, and then we got Whimsicott, okay, I just worry about, like, I kind of want to double in to, okay, what we'll do is we'll go after the Moltres, we'll go for the Tri-Attack, oh, actually, no, wait there, wait there, what we're going to do, what we're going to do is go for the, the guys that are into the Mama Swine. Um, we'll go for an Eerie Impulse into the Moltres. Put it down to minus two. That means if we do Super Protect from the Mamo, um, <clears throat> then at least the Moltres isn't in a position to take down Tapu Fini. Mamo's probably sashed, I'd imagine. Seeing as the eject button was on the Whimsicott, it makes more sense. Yeah, there's a sash. It's going to get an Earthquake off. It may not be enough to take down. It's not... It's not life orbed. So I don't think I'll take down Finny. No, we do survive. What are we going to see? And there's a taunt. Ideal. We get through the turn perfectly. Okay, we're in a great spot now because we just go for uh, Moonblast. Because <laughs> we'll take an Ice Shard. Oh, will we? Will we take an Ice Shard? Will we take an Ice Shard? I don't know if we will take an Ice Shard. Um. Okay, well, Moonblast, and you know, I'm gonna go for the tri attack into Mama Swine. I need to remove it from the field. We need to remove that Ice Shard threat, really. Yeah, hopefully, we can take this. Oh, no, just about. No, nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, well, if the Moltres has got Taunt, though, then it kind of feels like it probably hasn't got Nasty Plot. And Fiery Wrath, minus two take that like a champ so we can we can stall out these taunt turns which is great our misty train disappears and then there's just a whimmy to come onto the field now um we've got moltres coming out which is gonna be enough to help us deal with everything we've got eerie impulse as well that we can go on to the whimsicott if we want uh, but an air slash will be enough to get the the whimmy for sure we're in a nice position now just to go for that and then start try attacking the Moltres as well and that should hopefully wrap up the game for us it's been a little bit of a tricky one like Mama Swine's always one of those really tricky Pokemon uh you have to kind of be very careful with dealing with you never know if it's life or but it's going to hit very hard um we do lose that EVO light there unfortunately but I think Moltres versus Moltres we're going to be fine we got the life orb they're minus two we we'll get rid of the Whimsicott, it does steal that if you're light from my P2, but I mean, it could be worse. Um, and there's a Fiery Wrath coming out, like I say, minus two. And then we'll put it down to minus four before we finish up here with our Trick Room. I think we got one more turn. We got one more turn? Yeah, we got one more turn. There we go. And we can just go for another Air Slash into the, the Moltres. Obviously, with those speed boosts as well, it has made it a little bit. Oh, we can't, we can't, we can't, we're taunted. Of course we are taunted. Yeah, I keep forgetting that we're taunted from the Moltres. It's a nice option on Moltres. I do like the access. Like, taunt in a team, I think, is a very useful thing. Uh, I think the more tricky teams I played were the teams where they had, like, double taunt. And it made it really difficult to uh, make the most out of uh, what 
what P2 can do. Um, we are going to see another air slash here, and this should be enough now to take down the Moltres and, and wrap up this game. And uh, very good game to my opponent. A nice one for us to kick off with today. We saw some nice aspects of the team. Got to talk about some of the flaw of how uh, the build works. So hopefully we can continue that in our next one. But good game to Haru, and we'll move on to our next opponent of the episode. <laughs> up next, we've got Flacco playing a team of Scissor, Gengar, Heatran, Charizard, Clefable, and Bishop. So an interesting, another interesting build here uh you've got the charizard heatran the double fire call there you've got redirection from the clefable um if we get any boosts on anything obviously you've got to be be aware that they've got unaware uh so they'll just ignore any boosts that we get with that redirection there clefable such a, a tanky pokemon as well and then double steel as well which is interesting you've got the bishop on one end and the scissor on the other and then the gengar kind of making up the numbers there probably going to be uh icy wind gengar probably trick room in prison maybe um sludge wave could be an option as well you've got three steel types within the team so i mean in all honesty like landorus is great here the thing that we'd need to be very careful of is obviously activating the defiant ability on that bishop to start with uh, is it sashed uh, probably not i think the sash probably belongs on the gengar here so we're probably safe to lead landorus we'll take a uh we should take a boosted life orb sucker punch we should do um but what are our other options? I think Regieleki here is really nice. It gives us a nice way to uh, to slow things down if we want. Um, and I think in general, our Trick Room is a really, really strong mod. So, um, yeah, let's go. Let's go Landorus. Let's go Glastria. And let's go P2. It seems a bit crazy that I'm bringing Glastria to double, double fire, triple steel. But Glastria is a beast, and I want to feature it today, so we're going to run with Glastria. Try and make the most of it short off with the Assault Vest, because the Assault Vest variant isn't something we've run on the channel yet. Um, I think it's a really nice option on Glastria. I really do like the Assault Vest. It gives it such it's such a difficult Pokemon to deal with anywhere when it is maxed. But um, when it's not maxed, it's it's even e even stronger okay well bishop gengar coming out for my opponent is one of them sashed i wonder if one of them scarfed i wonder if the gengar scarfed wonder it could be could be but i think what we'll do is we will lock we'll protect here with regieleki and we're just going to lock into an earthquake that will be enough to take down the bishop the gengar um Unless we see sashes on, on anything, or if anything does max. Obviously, that's the other issue that we need to kind of worry about here. But um, I think if you're my opponent, this is the other thing about Scarf Landorus, especially in a best of one situation. You know, your opponent's not expecting Scarf a lot of the time. People generally are running the Assault Vest. So in this situation, you're thinking, okay, Icy Wind. Assurance is a nice way for us to get around everything here. So... Um, if everything pans out well. And even if we lose Landorus here, it's not the end of the world because, you know, the Regieleki is protected. As long as we get our Earthquake off, we're in good we're in good shape because we've got the option then to go for uh, the Electro Web the next turn, lower the speed on things and then allow something else to kind of do the job that we need it to do. And Bishop going for... Um, the max means that as well, you know, we've got no threat of a sucker punch, which is probably the biggest threat uh, with everything that we've got going on right now. So there's the earthquake. Let's see where the sash is. I'm putting my money on the Gengar. I'm putting my money on the Gengar. Yeah, there it is. Okay, on that Gengar. I'm going to see an icy wind for sure and a darkness. Oh, we're going to see a sludge wave. Sludge wave. Where are you going now, Bishop? Are you gonna go sludge? Are you gonna go into if you go if you go into Regieleki here, then we've got this game locked and loaded. Nah, it's into the Landorus. Yeah, that's fine now. That's fine. I think at this point we're fine because we've got P2 to bring in. Uh, the fence rise. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Right. Now the main aim of the game here is to get our trick room up. Um, I don't think I want to, I don't think the bishop's going to be able to take down the p2 from this range. Thing is, I kind of want Regieleki to be off the field so I can get Glastria on pretty free, 
I'm not really confident about going for, I mean, will the Thunderbolt get the Bishop from this range? Potentially. But doing that, it leaves, leaves the Gengar kind of open to going for an Imprison, which is not the thing that we want. I think what we'll do is we'll go for the Trick Room. It might mean we have to sack Regilecki the next turn. Not the most conventional way to run this, but we need to be able to get a Trick Room up. Uh, and if Regilecki like, gets left alone this turn, we still got the Sash. Okay, Max Flutterby. Take that. All day long. Don't mind that. We get a Trick Room up. We're in a nice spot. Still on that, these Max turns as well. And like I said, we still got the Sash on Regilecki, so... For my opponent to get anything out of the next turn, they're going to have to double down into it. We just really want Regilecki off the field, though, because it's like... The, you know, we could have easily Volt Switched there, but at the same time, if we Volt Switch in, uh, or the Gengar protects, we Volt Switch in and get Glastria on the field, and it takes some big old fat damage. It's not really the, the most ideal situation that we want to kind of find ourselves in. So I think we'll go for the Thunderbolt now into the Bishop. We'll just go for a recover with P2. Uh, we want to try and keep our longevity. Now, this is a little bit dangerous because the Scissor could go for a Sword Stance here. If it does then that makes things a little bit more tricky, for sure. And we just got to hope that a Thunderbolt will be enough to get the Bishop from this range. Um, Am I confident that it's going to do that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's very close. I could see it being taken out by a Thunderbolt, but at the same time, I could see it also surviving. It is maxed as well you gotta you gotta keep that in mind so do get the recover off which is nice now a uh, special defense uh, special attack is getting lowered every time which is not ideal x scissor coming out it's going to be into the reggie Alecki. okay it takes a massive chunk we see no sword stance which is great and there's a max flutter by is it going to be it's into p2 again uh i don't think uh reggie Alecki is going to be the thing i don't think it's going to be able to uh to survive this to be honest uh, the bishop's not going down to this because of the minus two, of course. They forget about the, that. Um, okay. I mean, now we need to worry about the assurance combination. Um, okay, let's go for the bishop again. Let's go for another recover. Really, what we want to be doing is switching P2 out to get it back onto the field so we reset those drops or at least like try attack can be doing some damage. But I think I'm kind of kicking myself a little bit in this one because I think the problem is like I'm too scared to switch Glastria in when I should have been like a little bit more bold with my switch ins to get Glastria onto the field as soon as possible. It's just hard when there's two steel types kind of sitting in front of you here. We do see the brick break doing a, a nice chunk of damage there uh, and an iron head into Regilecki. Okay, so that's okay. We're finally going to be able to get Glastria onto the field, which is actually what we want to be able to do. And, you know, even though P2 is, like, really, really weakened, the thing is, if we can keep P2 alive, that's the big key here. We've got to keep bear in mind that Heatran could be in the back. So what we want to try and do is get at least a Max Quake up right now onto the Bishop. Get rid of that. Get another Recover off with our P2. Just keep it on the field because we're going to probably need our Trick Room. We've eaten into quite a few of our Trick Room turns already, so we need to be mindful that the Trick Room will end uh, mid Dynamax turn. So we're going to have to be in a position where at least if we get the Max Quake off now, we get the extra defense boost. If it is a Heatran in the back, we've got that extra cover. Um, so it will allow us a turn that we probably need to get the trick room up again with P2. Um, and then we can start going for, I think one turn we're going to have to try and get a defense boost. That's the thing. So hopefully we don't see a sucker punch here. Sucker punch wouldn't be great. No sucker punch, which is ideal. Okay, we don't want to have to contend with that. Max Quake is going to be coming out, which is good. So we get the special defense boost. Like I said, it's kind of covering a Heatran, sitting, lurking in the back. Um, we're going to recover off with P2. This scissor is hitting pretty hard every time it's kind of coming out. We do get the attack boost as well, which is the big bonus for us here with Glastria. Um, we get the recover. Keeps P2 in the game. Like I already mentioned, how, how important that is going to be going forward. 
Um, and another brick break coming out from this scissor, just keeping that pressure on. Um, probably got one more, I think one more turn of our trick room left. We're gonna have to, okay, it's clefable. Okay, that's fine. Max steel spike into that thing. Um, that gives us the defense boost that we kind of need, gives us super effective damage onto Clefable as well. We'll recover again because we don't want to be just taking brick break damage. If we take another brick break and we don't recover here, we're in no position to get another trick room up and we need the trick room up. I think like obviously what we've got facing us right now, uh, we're the slowest things on the field. So we want to have that speed advantage if we can. So here's a max steel spike. Obviously the Clefable will ignore that uh, boost that we, uh, we have already got but the main thing is here the defense boost which will just sure up p2's ability to um at least take attacks a little bit better from the the scissor here um obviously the thing that i was worried about most i think with the scissor was definitely the the sword stance still a possibility we haven't seen it yet from my opponent so it could come out and uh, still disrupt us in that sort of sense oh the charm okay my well that makes things a little bit more tricky so you see a brick break now into glastria okay dimensions turn back to normal like i say aim of the game now is to get rid of the clefable and uh with our last turn and uh go for that um <laughs> trick room if we see another charm here though it's going to make it difficult to get rid of the scissor because p2 glastria not in a great position if we're like minus what would that put us to so we're plus one minus one minus three if we see another charm here which we're likely to do uh, I still think minus three will still get the Clefable as we see a dual wing beat come out from the scissor. A bit risky when you've got things like Iron Head as well. I don't know why you wouldn't just go for that as the charm comes out. Further weakening our horsey. But if we get the knockout here, it should put us to at least minus two now. So that's not the worst. Um, yeah, there we go. Okay, Clefable gone down. Um, just means dealing with the scissor becomes a little bit more tricky. Um, but I think now with the defense boost, like I said, that was the big kind of aim of the game. We'll be all right against scissor, or at least we should be, even though we've got like super weak P2 for standards going. Um, obviously the try attack, not really the option that you want against uh, scissor, but we'll just keep chipping away at it. And uh, hopefully <laughs> between the two, we should be able to, uh, should be able to deal with it. Um, Pretty effectively i think we've got icicle crash it's a more riskier option and we'll go for that try attack but with recover on p2 i think we should be able to out out match the the scissor that's the the big thing here so there's the first icicle crash what we're going to see minus two damage what's it like come on it's actually really good it's really good damage there so oh okay okay we get very lucky um very lucky okay the rng definitely helping us out try attack not doing too much it's like, okay, and we get the paralysis, which is actually kind of hindering us in Trick Room, honestly. Uh, but yeah, you can see that defense boost now, how useful that is onto the P2. We'll go for another Icicle Crash. If we've got another crit, that's ideal. We're probably better off reversing the Trick Room now, but my opponent cancels the battle because it's it's inevitable with Recover on P2, the damage that they're doing to it. There's no way they're going to out-damage us. So very good game to Falco, and we'll jump into the rental code for you guys. Okay, friends, well, here is the rental code for today's team. This is a team that I used in Players' Cup 3, hopefully to get me through to the next stage of the tournament, the regional heats that will be happening next month. Uh, if you try the team out, have a lot of fun with it. It's a really fun build. It's uh, quite. It's got some odd uh, options on there, like the Landorus, the Bulldozers. Really, we didn't see that in today's episode, but really helps support things like the Moltres, you know, to help get around things like Nihiligo. Um, Reggie Alecki, you can protect Bulldoze, and then the next turn you're in a great position with Moltres to, um, you know do some good damage after a second bulldoze. There's lots of options here with the team. I feel like it has a lot of good utility between itself, the P2, the Glastria mod, the Tapafini kind of ties things together as well, helps slow things down when things are getting a bit awkward. But if you do try the team out, as always, do let me know down in the comment section how you get on with it. And uh, I am going to look forward to hearing about all of your Players' Cup experiences over the weekend. And hopefully a lot of you had a lot of fun, like I mentioned earlier on in the episode, and uh, you've all qualified to the next round. That's that was that is what i want to hear but even if you didn't as long as you had fun as long as you enjoyed this experience that's all that matters and um you can always 
have a crack at the Players' Cup 4, potentially, if there is one. I would assume there will be. Uh, they've done three so far, so oh, they're in, in the middle of doing the third one right now, as we know. Uh, but potentially they will do a fourth. Hopefully they do. And uh, you'll have another crack at it then. Right. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, hope you've enjoyed today's episode. As always, if you have, do uh, consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already uh, for more of this sort of content and other content that we have on the channel. And I will see you all for another episode very soon. So thank you so much for tuning in, friends. Have a great day, whatever time of day it is, wherever you are. And I'll catch you all for another episode very soon. So until then, take care. Bye-bye.